Revolution of the Earth. In this module, you will learn about the revolution of the Earth and understand the occurrence of different seasons in a year. Sid's friend Sophie has gone on a summer vacation to Chile in South America. One day, Sid decided to call her. Hi, Alicia. How are you doing? I hope you are having fun on your holiday. Hello, Sid. I'm fine. I'm having a lot of fun, but it's really cold here. Cold? How's that possible? It's so hot here in India. Do you know why it is hot in India and cold in Chile at the same time? It is because India lies in the northern hemisphere and Chile in the southern hemisphere. We already know that the earth spins on its axis. This is known as rotation of the earth. It takes about 24 hours to complete one rotation of the earth. The earth moves in two ways. It also revolves around the sun. Let's see what is meant by revolution. When a planet or a moon revolves around an object, it is called revolution. The imaginary path around which an object moves is called its orbit. This means that the earth revolves around the sun in its orbit. Do you know that the shape of the earth's orbit is not circular but elliptical or oval in shape? The earth takes about 365 and one fourth days to complete one revolution. However, there are 365 days in a year and one fourth day is equal to 6 hours. This balance of 6 hours is added up together for 4 years, which results in an additional day. As a result, there are 29 days in the month of February. In that year, there are 366 days instead of 365 days. It is known as a leap year. A leap year comes once in every 4 years. A year which is evenly divisible by 4 is a leap year. Find out from your teacher about the next leap year. How can you identify whether a year is a leap year or not? Let's see some examples. The year 1999. Do you think it was a leap year? If we divide 1999 by 4, the result is 499.75. Oh, it is not completely divisible by 4. Therefore, it is not a leap year. The year 1984, if we divide 1984 by 4, the result is 496. Yes, it is completely divisible by 4, which means that 1984 was a leap year. The revolution of the earth and the tilted axis of the earth are two main factors that cause the occurrence of different seasons. As the tilted earth moves around the sun, a part of the earth is closer to the sun, which means that the other part is away from the sun. When the north pole is tilted towards the sun, the northern hemisphere experiences summer, such as in the month of June. When the north pole is away from the sun, the northern hemisphere experiences winter, such as in the month of December. On the other hand, there is winter in the southern hemisphere in the month of June and there is summer such as in the month of December. When the two poles are at an equal distance away from the sun, there are spring and autumn seasons. During these seasons, it is neither hot nor cold. India lies in the northern hemisphere. There is summer season in India in the months of March to May and winter in the months of December to February. Have you observed that the days are longer and nights are shorter in summer? 
it gets dark late in the evening on the contrary the days are shorter and nights are longer in winter it gets dark earlier in the evening in summer the days continue to extend until 21st june in the northern hemisphere 21st june is the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere it is known as the summer solstice the term solstice means when the sun stands still the length of the day slowly starts to decrease after the summer solstice the length of the day starts decreasing thereafter days in winter continue to shrink until 22nd december in the northern hemisphere this is the shortest day of the year in the northern hemisphere it is known as the winter solstice the length of the day begins to slowly increase after the winter solstice there are two days in a year when the days and nights are equal the sun shines directly on the equator on these two days these are called equinoxes equinox literally means equal night in the northern hemisphere 21st march and 23rd september are known as spring or vernal equinox and autumnal equinox respectively now i understand the northern and southern hemispheres experience different seasons at the same time of the year this change in seasons is caused by the tilting of the earth on its axis and the revolution of the earth around the sun when the northern hemisphere experiences summer the southern hemisphere experiences winter and vice versa similarly when the northern hemisphere experiences autumn the southern hemisphere experiences spring and vice versa let's recap the earth moves in two ways rotation on its axis and revolution around the sun the earth revolves around the sun in its own orbit the earth takes about 365 and 1/4 days to complete one revolution a leap year has 366 days which comes after every 4 years the change of seasons is caused by the axial tilt of the earth and the earth's revolution around the sun when the northern hemisphere is close to the sun it experiences summer at the same time the southern hemisphere experiences winter when the northern hemisphere is away from the sun it experiences winter when the two poles are at an equal distance away from the sun there are spring and autumn seasons during these seasons it is neither hot nor cold 21st june is the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere it is known as the summer solstice 22nd december is the shortest day of the year in the northern hemisphere it is known as the winter solstice this is the opposite for the southern hemisphere there are two days in a year when the sun shines directly over the equator these are called equinoxes